Hello class, in this uh, video we're going to be covering section 8.2 called permutations and there are 15 problems in this section. So starting off with number one, it says there are seven performers who will present their comedy acts this weekend at a comedy club. How many different ways are there to schedule their appearances? So if we have seven different performers, let's think about this. For the first performance, right? Or the first one that you're selecting a spot for, um, you have seven different possibilities. But once you choose one, then when you go to choose the second spot, um, there's gonna be one less comedian to choose from. And so there's only six options now. Then when you go to choose your third, you only have five options. When you go to choose your fourth, there's only going to be four options. When you go to choose your fifth, there will now only be three options, so on and so forth, right? Until the last place, there's only one other person that hasn't been chosen yet, right? Um, and so essentially what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to multiply all of those possibilities together to find the total number of different ways, right? So you're doing seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. This is literally the definition of what is called seven factorial, okay? So that exclamation point doesn't mean it's an excited seven. It means it's seven factorial, which means to multiply seven times six times five times four times three times two all the way to one, okay? Now there is a button in your calculator and I did write the steps on here, but I wanted to show it to you on the camera as well. So if you type in the seven first, and you want the factorial symbol to come up, you have to hit the button that says probability. And then you'll notice that it's right there in, um, in option three. So I'm going to select option three and it pops up that factorial for me. And as soon as that's entered in there, then I can just hit enter and it does say 5,040. Now I could have done seven times six times five times four times three times two times one. Um, and it would give me that same 5,040, but factorials are like a shorter way to write that, okay? So for number two, and, oh, I'm sorry. In an encyclopedia of language, the author presents five sentences that make a reasonable paragraph regardless of their order. The sentences are listed below. Mark had told him about the foxes. John looked out the window. Could it be a fox? However, nobody had seen one for months. He thought he saw a shape in the bushes. In how many different orders can the five sentences be arranged? So we're trying to order them. The same with the comedians. We're trying to order them, right? Um, and so we're going to go ahead and figure out how to do that. And so for, if you have, if you're trying to choose your first sentence, then you have all five sentences as an option. When you try to choose your second sentence, one sentence has already been chosen. So you only have four sentences left to choose from for your second sentence. Similarly, for your third, now you only have three options. For your fourth sentence, you now only have two options. And then for your fifth sentence, it's what's left over. So it's, you only have that one option. Again, that can be written as five factorial. And five factorial, if you practice typing that in your calculator, make sure that you can get 120. For number three, there are nine performers who present their comedy acts this weekend at a comedy club. One of the performers insists on being the last stand-up comic of the evening. If this performer's request is granted, how many different ways are there to schedule the appearances? So what I did was I ordered them um, from the first person that was gonna show up to the last person that was gonna be on the stage, right? This is usually like your headliner. These are all the people that lead up to the main event, okay? Now, apparently you have one performer that's like persistent that they're the last comic at the end of the evening. 
So you don't have any options for that person. You know who that one person is. But if I want to go from the first position all the way up to that ninth position, for the first position, I'm only actually gonna have eight performers as options because number one already has a spot as the last stand-up comic. So I only have eight options for the first spot, leaving me with seven options for the second, six options for the third, five options for the fourth, four options for the fifth, three options for the uh, sixth performer, two options for the seventh performer, and then one option left for the eighth performer, and we already know the ninth performer had already been chosen. So essentially what you have is you have all of this, which can be represented by eight factorial times an extra one. We also know that anything times one is itself, right? So eight factorial times one is just gonna be eight factorial. So we type eight factorial in the calculator and we ended up with 40,320 weights. Now, number four says evaluate the factorial expression. And I believe you probably could type that in your calculator if I'm not mistaken. So if I hit fraction 24 probability three and I go to the bottom and I hit 19 probability three, it looks exactly like, if I go over to the right, that looks exactly like this fraction that's right here, okay? And if I hit enter, I get the same exact answer that I have over here, okay? But I kind of wanted to explain to you the reasoning behind what was going on. So why is this the answer? So what I did was, is I wrote out 24 factorial, that's 24 times 23 times 22 times 21, 20, 19, 18, blah, 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 all the way down to three, two, one, right? And 19 factorial is the same thing. 19 times 18 times 17 times 16, all the way down to times three times two times one. Now, if you notice in the top and in the bottom, they both have those factors from 19 all the way down to one. So essentially what's gonna happen is the 19 is gonna cancel with the 19, 18 is gonna cancel with the 18. All of them are gonna cancel each other out. And all you're gonna be left with is 24 times 23, 23 times 22 times 21 times 20. And guess what? That turns out to be that same exact number that we got from the calculator earlier. Another way to write it, and this is the more common way to write it, is to go 24, 23, 22, 21, 20. And then instead of writing 19 all the way to one, you just write 19 factorial, okay? And so then that would cancel with the 19 factorial at the bottom, and I'm still left with to multiply these numbers, which we know gives us this result, okay? Um, similarly for number five, uh, try it, try to do it in your calculator, but it should be possible to type that whole thing in your calculator. I did it by hand just because I'm pretty familiar with factorials. I know how they behave. So I'm just doing it by hand. It's also teaching moments, right? So first you do what's in the parentheses always, regardless if there's factorials or not. You do what's in the parentheses, six minus three is three. Then I take the bigger factorial and I write six times, actually, I messed up here. And this is not right. So six times factorial is gonna be six times five times four times three factorial. And I stop at three factorial because the bottom is three factorial. So the bottom, instead of writing three, two, one, and then three, two, one again, I just wrote the factorials. So those will cancel, but I'll just be left with six times five times four, which is actually 120. And let's see what we get if we type it in the calculator. Oops, clear. And if I type the whole thing in the calculator, I do get the same 120. Okay, so now for number six, it says use the formula for NPR. And I like to, it's, it's 
<laughs> when they say NPR, N is the number of options that you have, and R is how many you're choosing. Okay. And so sometimes I like to say P as in pick. So um, N pick R. So I have N options and I'm picking R number of um, ways. So I am using this formula from this sheet of paper for permutations. So on that sheet of paper, it does give you this formula. So once you know what that number in the front is, it goes in the top and in the parentheses. Once you know what this number is, it goes behind the minus in the parentheses. And so for here, this one, it says it wants us to evaluate 9P4. So it's going to be 9 factorial over 9 minus 4 factorial. Well, 9 minus 4 is 5 factorial. And remember what we talked about. This could be expanded into 9 times 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 factorial, which is going to cancel with that 5 factorial. And so you're just left with 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, which happens to be 3,024. Now, keep in mind that um, you could have just typed this in the calculator and it would give you this, okay? Now, if you don't even want to type in the whole formula, you can avoid typing in the whole formula. You can literally type in this. The only reason why I did it this way is because the directions literally said use the formula. They didn't say use the calculator, they said use the formula. So that's why I applied the formula, then tried to simplify it to get to my answer, okay? Um, but you can do that whole thing in a calculator. You can type in NP4. The way you do it is you type in the first number nine, and then you go to probability. And then if you notice, option one has NPR. So I would just hit number one, the number one to select NPR and then give them the R value. The R value for this problem was not four. So when I hit enter, it gives me that same answer, 3024. So you can do them eventually. They're not gonna ask you to use the formula. And so eventually you can use the calculator, but for these two specific problems, it does make me use the formula, okay? Now for number seven, it says use the formula NPR to evaluate the following expression. So it's 9P9. So if I have nine as my N and as my P, at the bottom, I would have zero factorial because nine minus nine is zero. But in the definitions of factorials, we know for any number bigger than one, any number greater than one, um, it's going to be n factorial is the same as n times n minus one times n minus two, all the way down until you get to three, two, one, okay? Um, or until you just get to one, two and one. Okay. Um, I don't want to say three because if this number is n is greater than one, it, n could be two, and then we don't really have any of this. You just have two and one. But if n were three, it would be three, then decrease it to two, then to decrease it to one, and you always stop at one. Okay. But these are the definitions of factorials. So if zero factorial is defined as one, then this denominator is just a one. And we know anything divided by one is the same exact thing. So really all we're doing is computing nine factorial. And if I stick nine factorial in my calculator, it does give me three, six, two, eight, eight, zero, okay? Eventually though, if it didn't say use the formula, I could enter nine probability one and then nine again. And it does give me that same response, okay? Okay, number eight. So number eight says, a club with 17 members is to choose three officers, a president, a vice president, and a secretary treasurer. If each office is to be held by one person and no person can hold more than one office, 
and how many ways can those offices be filled? So the old method would have been, oh, I have 17 people to choose from for the first, uh, maybe the president, right? Once you choose a president, now you only have 16 people left to choose from for vice president, since no one can be both, right? And then after you choose the vice president, now you only have 15 options to figure out uh, who can be the secretary or treasurer. So if I multiply all of those, I get 4,080. But with this new method, it's talking about the permutation. So I have 17 people and I need to fill three spots. And the order in which those people go in those spots matters, right? So it's 17 P3. Now I did it by hand again, but here I didn't have to because it never said use the formula. So I could have just typed in 17 probability option one and then three. And it gives me that same 4,800. Okay, I just kind of wanted to show you that this actually does turn out to be the same as the old method. Okay, they're just giving it a name and giving it a formula now. Okay, and there is another formula, and we'll talk about it in the next section. But essentially, with the other formula, is when you don't care if the order, um, if there's an order or not. So I just need to select you know, two performers. I don't care what order the performers perform in. They just need to be selected, okay? Um, that's kind of like, you know, if you have a job application and you get, you know, you want to hire three people for the same position, but you have 10 candidates. It doesn't matter how those 10 are selected. You just need three of them and it doesn't matter what order because they're all going to have the same position, right? That would be a different kind of um, formula versus I need someone for position A and I need someone for position B and I need someone for position C. And so out of those 10 candidates, when I choose the three people I want, one of them has to go in position A, one of them has to go in position B and one of them has to go in position C. And so in that case, the order does matter, okay? We'll talk about it again when we begin the next section, but there is a difference between finding the possible ways when the order matters versus when the order does not matter. Right now we're talking about permutations and in all of these permutations, the order does matter. If you pay attention to the scenarios, the order matters. So moving on to number nine, it says for a segment of a radio show, a disc jockey can play five records. There are nine records to select from. In how many ways can the program for this segment be arranged? So if you've got a program and you need to play five songs, the order in which you play five songs is going to matter, okay? That is going to give you, um, that, that is going to give you that specific program, okay? Um, if I chose different songs or in a different order, that's a whole different program, okay? So the, the order in which these songs are played does matter. So you do have nine to choose from, right? Um, but you're only gonna play five of those records. So again, you can do it the old way, which means for the first song in the program, you have nine options. Second song, you have eight. Third song, you have seven options left. Fourth song, you have six options left. And the last song in the program, you have five options left. Or you can do nine permutation five. Okay, or nine pick five. So if I type nine pick five in my calculator, I want you to try it, but you should get that same value, one, five, one, two, zero. Okay, so try typing in nine P five in your calculator and make sure that you can get that answer. You wanna verify that you know how to use your calculator, especially before you have to take the test, right? Okay. Number 10, it says in a race in which seven automobiles are entered and there are no ties, in how many ways can the first three finishers come in? So that means first place, second place, third place. That means the order matters here. So you've got seven automobiles to choose from and then three places in which the order matters. So we're gonna do seven P three. Again, try to type that in your calculator. You should get to 10. 
Number 11 says at a benefit concert, 11 bands have volunteered to perform, but there are only enough time. There is only enough time for nine of the bands to play. How many lineups are possible? Now they said lineups. So that means that the order in which these people come out on the stage matters, okay? If you switch it up, that's a totally different lineup than the lineup that you originally had, okay? So here you have 11 options, 11 bands to choose from, but you're trying to pick those nine specific positions in the lineup. So here the order matters. So we're gonna be doing 11 P9. And if you type that in your calculator, you do get this very large number, um, 19,958,400. For number 12, it says, in how many distinct ways can the letters of the word metal be arranged? Now, this one is different, okay? I wanna draw your attention back to this formula sheet because um, a lot of these, I think 12 and 13 are different. So 12 and 13 actually have duplicated items, okay? So you'll notice that in the word metal, there's two Ds and two Es. So you have duplicated um, items in there, okay? And the same with the next problem, statistics. It's got three Ts, three Ss, and two Is, okay? So you have three letters that are duplicated there, okay? Now, when you're trying to find the permutations on duplicated items, you actually have to follow this. So N is the number of items altogether. So for instance, in this case, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six different um, letters or six different letters that I need to choose from. So these numbers are wrong. <laughs> Probably gonna change my answer a lot, but it's okay, we'll do it again. So there's six different spots, one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different spots. And then I need to know how many are being repeated. So I do have two E's. So that's this two here for the E's because those are duplicated twice. And then I have two D's. So this, this two represents the D's, okay? Those are my duplicated items. And so if I type that in my calculator, I'm pretty sure it's not gonna be the same value, but let's go check. So fraction six, probability three over, two probability three, two probability three. So that looks exactly like it does on my paper. And I'm gonna hit enter and I get 180. So this is actually supposed to be 180. I was way wrong with that one the first time. I just miscounted apparently. But this is the exact reason why I say it's important to turn in your paperwork because you might get the answer completely wrong, but it might've been something as simple as just miscounting, okay? And I can tell the difference between when you just make an error and when you truly don't understand what's going on, okay? Um, so that would be for this particular problem. Now let's go look at number 13 and make sure I didn't make an error on that one, okay? So how many letters are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. So there are 10 specific positions on this one, okay? But I realized that I had three Ts, three Ss, and two Is repeated here. So this three is gonna represent the, the Ts. This rep, uh, three represents the number of Ss. And then this two represents the number of repeated Is, okay? And if I type all of that in my calculator, now I'm gonna cheat a little bit because I already typed this fraction in. So I'm just gonna change that to 10, insert the zero. So now that says 10 factorial. And at the bottom, I'm gonna type in three factorial, three factorial times two factorial. Oops, that was not it. There we go. Now that looks like what's on my paper. And if I hit enter, I do get the same value here, okay? So now on um, this problem, it says, in how many ways can the digits in the number, in this number be arranged? Oh, so this one was very similar. So we have seven different 
um, black positions there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven different positions. But we have a repeated number here. There are five ones here. So this five represents that repeated one that keeps popping up. And so if you type seven factorial over five factorial in your calculator, you do get 42. Now the last option is a signal can be formed by running different colored flags um, up a pole, one above the other. Find the number of different signals consisting of eight flags that can be made using four white flags, two red flags, and two blue flags. So you definitely have repeated um, things going on here, okay? So we have eight flags total. That's what they want on the poll. They want eight flags. So that's going to be my numerator. But of those flags, we do have some duplicates. So we have four uh, white flags, we have two red flags, and then we have two blue flags that are repeated. So if you type that whole fraction in your calculator, eight factorial over four factorial, two factorial, two factorial, you, you do end up with the value 420. So um, there are 420 different options. The, the idea here is that it wouldn't matter if you typed in, you know, the first, if you put in the first white flag or the third white flag, it's still a white flag on the poll, right? You can't tell the difference between which white flag you put on the poll. So that's the idea there in why we have to divide. We kind of have to like take those different combinations out of the scenario because they're equivalent to other combinations in the scenario. Um, other than that, this is the end of this particular section. And in the next one, uh, we'll start talking about what are called combinations where the order doesn't matter in that case. So I will see you in the next one.